Good morning. Welcome to Meadowbrook Congregational Church. It is a joy to have you worship with us on this beautiful January morning. This is the first Sunday in the season of Epiphany, a season which is symbolized by the light of a star. During this season, we contemplate how God is revealed to us, how God guides us, how God speaks to us today. If you're worshiping with us on Facebook Live, please say hello, offer a greeting or some thoughts in the comments section. This morning's service will be available later in the day on YouTube and also on the church's website. We're celebrating the Sacrament of the Lord's Supper later in our service today. So now would be a good time to get some juice or some bread ready to participate in the sacrament at that time. We invite everyone to the Lord's table. Annual reports of officers and ministry leaders are due to the church office today. If there's a reason why you can't have your report finished at that time, please contact the church office tomorrow morning. The 36th annual meeting of Meadowbrook Congregational Church is called for Sunday, January 31st at 1130 a.m. The annual reports of church officers, minister, ministry teams, and committees will be made available beginning on Monday, January 18th. The financial position of the church will be disclosed. An operating budget for 2021 will be presented for approval. Board members and officers will be elected, and the congregation will conduct any business that will rightfully come before it. All members and friends of the congregation are encouraged to attend. For everyone's safety, this year's meeting will be held virtually by Zoom. A link to the meeting, along with the PDF and Word versions of the annual report, will be forwarded to all members and friends by email on Monday, January 18th. The treasurer's report will be emailed separately prior to the meeting, and those who are unable to download the reports electronically can call the church office for a hard copy. Hope you got all that. Book club meets tomorrow night at 7.30 via the Zoom platform. This month's book is The Whistling Season by uh, Ivan Doig. To receive the link, please contact Colleen Foster. The Women's Faith Group meets this Thursday at 11 a.m. They're discussing The Lord is My Shepherd by Rabbi Harold Kushner. Get the Zoom link for that group. Also contact Colleen. Mayflower Cafe resumes on Tuesday, January 19th at 7 p.m. on Zoom. We have a six-week session on the Sermon on the Mount. If you want the link to join the class, please contact me. A trivia night is planned for Friday, January 22nd, beginning at 8 p.m. This event will also be on Zoom. There will be two one-hour games of bar-style trivia. Because we're meeting virtually, your team members can be from next door or from completely across the country. I'll be hosting and asking the questions, and teams will then enter the breakout rooms to discuss their answers. We're asking for a $5 donation per player. Please note this is a suggested donation, and we want you to play. Sign up at a Google Doc link that is listed on our website or available in the Monday Messenger, and start recruiting your team members now. Offering envelopes and directories are available outside the North Parking Lot Church doors during office hours Monday and Tuesday from 9 to 2. You can always bring non-perishable food items for Northville Civic Concern and leave those on the benches outside the door. We're grateful for your faithful financial support. Your offerings can be made electronically via Venmo or PayPal. You can mail a check to the church or drop it off in the locked mailbox near the street. And we thank you so much for your giving. Our musicians today are Dave Howland, John Howland Streng, and Danny Reeves. Our technicians this morning are Scott Hokett, Sherilyn Foster, and Colleen Foster. The heavens open, the spirit descends, Jesus emerges from the water, and a voice echoes in the universe, this is my child, my beloved, with whom I am pleased. Jesus is named and claimed, and we come to the water. We remember that we are also named and claimed. This morning, let us worship the one who names us and claims us still. Let us celebrate our belonging to God. Our opening hymn is Spirit of God, Descend Upon My Heart.
Let us pray. Almighty God, your spirit swept over the waters of creation, and you are sweeping over us now, creating within and among us something new. Call us away from the distractions of our world to experience what you are doing now in us, through us, and in our world. Open us to a new awakening, a new beginning, where we look at things through the goodness of your creation, through the possibilities that you bring. Lead us to the light in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning will be offered to us by Steve Broda. Good morning. Our reading today can be found in the New Testament, in the book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 4 through 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts with wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thongs of his sandal. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up and out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from the heavens, You are my Son, the Beloved, With you, I am well pleased. May God bless this reading and our understanding of it and application to our lives. Last week, I was watching one of those uh, year-end sports reviews, a replay of the highlights and the lowlights of the past year. Several of the items were humorous, kind of like a miniature blooper reel in the midst of some very serious stuff. Back in May, Tom Brady and Peyton Manning joined Tiger Woods and Phil Mickelson in a special television and charity golf event called simply The Match. Brady, the six-time Super Bowl winning quarterback, did not play especially well. In fact, he was bordering on total embarrassment in front of a national television audience. But suddenly he made this miraculous shot, holding out an iron to the green on the seventh hole. Brady walked to the green and bent over to pick up the ball, but just as he did that, his pants ripped completely open across the seat. Of course, the picture of the great tear quickly made its way across all of social media, and at that point, Brady's golf game was the least embarrassing thing he had to worry about. I also remember a couple years ago when Providence College basketball coach Ed Cooley 
ripped his pants in the midst of the Big East Tournament final. Of course, there was this large television crowd, and, and after he ripped his pants, Cooley had to wear a hand towel tucked down into his pants like a fig leaf for the rest of the game. Adding to his discomfort, the game went to overtime. At the press conference following the contest, Cooley had this rather descriptive quote about his misfortune, and that's what I most remember. He said, when I sat down on the bench, I knew something was wrong. I felt a strong breeze coming from somewhere where I hadn't felt one coming before. The Gospel of Mark doesn't begin with a Christmas story. There's no star, there's no angel, there's no manger, no shepherd, no wise men. There's no mention of Mary or Joseph or even a baby. Instead, Mark opens with John the Baptist preaching about the coming of a, of a Messiah. And just nine verses into the book, Jesus is at the River Jordan ready for baptism. Mark has Jesus getting down to business really quickly. Mark doesn't talk about the baptism from a reporter's view or an eyewitness view. He writes of what happens from the point of Jesus, who's being baptized. And just as he was coming out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Apparently, this was no little thing. No door left ajar. It was a tearing open of all the barriers that existed between heaven and earth as the Spirit of God descended just as the Spirit of God had descended at creation long ago. It's interesting to note that the Greek word the author of Mark uses for torn open is the same word that we use when we talk about schisms or schizophrenic. It means to tear, to rip, to rend. Another time this same word is used in Matthew and Mark and Luke it is when the curtain temples are torn apart and Jesus takes his last breath upon the cross. From that we can understand that this is not a gentle tearing. It's something dramatic, something bold, boundary breaking. God was coming into the world in a new way in the person of Jesus the Christ. Whatever barrier existed between heaven and earth is no longer there. The heavens would not be so tightly closed ever again. God is no longer confined. Jesus is the one in whom God's spirit is at work, cleansing, healing, forgiving, renewing. God is active in the world. There's no place Jesus wouldn't go that God couldn't go to bring holy into the ordinary. I wonder if God has those same kind of radical and world-changing things in mind for us. I wonder if we took our baptism seriously, would we be able to feel a breeze coming from somewhere we've never experienced it before? If we would give our greatest allegiance to Jesus, seeking the life he's called us to live in our choices and in our priorities, how would that change us? Would it tear apart our comfortable ways? Would it force us to contemplate truth rather than living in myths that are convenient? Would it open us up to new ways of understanding? Would it bring swords instead of peace? In his book, His Truth is Marching On, author John Meacham writes about the late Georgia Congressman John Lewis. Meacham chronicles Lewis' courageous nonviolent action during the Civil Rights Movement, including the beating he received on a bridge in Selma, Alabama, another incident also in which he was attacked by a group of white men in Rock Hill, South Carolina. Meacham says that Lewis's faith had a lot to do with his willingness to stand for what was right, what, yet while growing up, his parents did not share in his activism. Meacham said they went to church and theirs was, as the Bible says, a straight and narrow way. But faith was something more that made life more comfortable, easier. But for Lewis, faith was something that had to move you. It tore apart the existing structures of his life and gave him the heart and mind and spirit to open his arms, not clench his fists. To give, not to take. To see and not look away. Mark Davis writes that when he reads over the story of Jesus' baptism in the Gospel of Mark, he hears the moment as a dramatic moment, loud and drastic. 
rather than a, a gentle moment of a dove flowing down, cascading around in circles, I think this is more re reminiscent of the fiery mountain where God met Moses. There may be even more than meets the eye in the dove imagery. Remember this dove turns harpy-like and immediately throws Jesus out into the wilderness in the very next verse. As we contemplate Jesus' baptism this day, we should also remember the nature of our baptism and the meaning of following him. As the baptized, as followers of Christ, we are to choose who we serve. God calls us to be a part of God's redeeming work in the world and to give, in ourself, give of ourselves in ways that are something more true and lasting than our everyday priorities. Perhaps this week in our nation, we are provided with a time and place to clearly see how we are called to be different. We're to be faithful, not fearful. We're to show love and grace to others rather than to act to defend rights and privileges. We're to seek and embrace and speak truth rather than falsehoods which support our existing ways of thinking and being. We're to trust in God rather than our own personal priorities, our own human created allegiance. The heavens are torn apart. We can catch a vision of what the world can be like, what our lives can be like if we take our faith more seriously. Today we consider what it means to say yes to a life torn open by the love of God. Amen. Our anthem this morning is the song Down to the River to Pray sung by John Howland Strength. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down to the river to pray. As I went down to the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown, good Lord, show me the way. Oh, brothers, let's go down, let's go down, come on down. Oh, brothers, let's go down, down to the river to
This is the day in which we recognize the appearance of God, the dawning of God's light into our world. Likewise, when we make a journey today, we journey to this table. and living ways. As individuals, touched by God to do some great things. Let us come to the Lord's table, overcoming the obstacles of our present life, throwing off the darkness of the past, and making new dreams, a world of new hope. Let's pray. God of great light, we give thanks for your presence with us at this sacred meal. We're grateful for the coming of the Christ child, for all that coming teaches us about your love and mercy. We ask that you bring your spirit upon these common elements, this bread and this cup, and may our partaking of them symbolize the sacrifice of Jesus our Christ. And as we eat of them, may we recall the sacrifice that was made on our behalf. Bring to us penitent hearts, greater comfort, and above all, a renewed faith through Jesus. We pray that as we prepare our hearts for this sacrament, we might repent of our sins, repent of our wrongdoings, that we might look at ourselves honestly and seek a better way. We pray that we might hear again our baptisms, the vows and promises that we have made, given all that you have brought for us. Help us to truly be your faithful people in these times. And in this place, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. After he had given thanks, he broke it. And he passed it to his disciples, saying, This is my body, broken for you. When you eat of it, remember me. Ministering to you now in Jesus' name, I offer you this bread, symbol of the body of Christ that is broken for us, symbol of God's sustenance for us this day and all days to come. This is the body of Christ. Let us eat of it together. In the same manner, on the same night, Jesus took the cup. After praying over it, he passed it to his disciples, urging them to drink of it. And he asked them to recall the promise that God had made with the people of Israel. And he said, in this cup is the symbol of the new covenant that God is about to make with you. The symbol of which shall be my blood shed for you. Ministering to you now in Jesus' name, I offer you this cup. The blood of Christ shed for our sins, the promise of God that flows into our future, renews us and strengthens us. This is the blood of Christ shed for our sins. Let us drink of it together. Let us join together in prayer. God of light, we come before you as your people of epiphany, finding your revelation at the very midst of our life experience. Today we pray that your light may shine on us in ways that we cannot ignore. Today we pray that your light might flow through us in hope. Today we pray that your light might radiate from us in our words and our actions. As a star rose in the nighttime sky long ago to draw people to the Christ child, send your blessing to us now, to all people, to all nations, to draw us to your peace and to your truth. We're living in a difficult winter, having survived a, a tough fall, we're all dealing with the effects of a pandemic, with worries about health and 
very practical economic implications. We're dealing with the frightening reality of all of this moving upon our mental health and our well-being. We're dealing with much uncertainty in our nation, having witnessed something that most of us probably thought we would never see. It worries us. It angers us. It frustrates us. It frightens us. Today we pray that you might speak to our hearts, reminding us of the, the meaning of our call to be your people. Today we pray that you might speak to the hearts of our leaders, bringing your spirit upon their policies, their decisions, their words. Replace all anger with a desire for understanding. Bring a, a cleansing light upon the falsehoods and conspiracies that form the basis of living with narrow and comfortable assumptions. Take away the inclination to remain the same by saying that others are wrong but not us. Open up the walls of defensiveness to allow a need for your grace. Replace our demands to justify our own correctness with an honest confession of our wrong, of our sin, and the need to seek forgiveness. Move our nation toward honesty that might be painful, rather than lies that continue to support our interests. Expand our vision beyond ourselves to the needs of our brothers and sisters, knowing that we cannot be greater until all of us are better. We pray today for an end to angry words and falsehoods. We pray for those who work for peace and understanding. We pray for truth and those who speak it. We pray for those who want to serve others in compassion and not to selfish interests. Bless our nation with peace. Bless our leaders with wisdom. Bless all of us with the strength we need for the living of these days. We continue to pray for an end to this virus for the healing of those with health concerns, for the safety and the energy of health care workers, for the swift and successful distribution of the vaccine, for the needs of those whose work and business has been affected, for those who are isolated and alone, for those who have sacrificed, for those who deal with burdens of change, routine, and schedule. We lift all these things to you, O oh God, knowing that you deal with each of us in tender and supporting ways. Hear us now as we bring to you our personal prayer in this moment of silent prayer. God, in Jesus, you brought the light of the world. In this epiphany season, reveal yourself to us again as light, as direction, as inspiration, as promise. Hear our prayers and make us reflections of your light, that the places of darkness around us would be illuminated and people drawn to you with joy. We ask these things in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. him is come be baptized.
I want to thank you again for taking the time to join us on this first Sunday of Epiphany, a season of light and promise. And now this service has ended. May the path that Christ walks to bring justice upon the earth, to bring light to those who live in darkness, to bring out those who live in bondage, to bring new things to all of creation. May that path run through our lives. May that be the road that we take. God is with us. Amen. Be safe and be well. I love you.